Jade Melbourne from the UC Caps is our special co-host on the WNBL show this week. Jado, it's been an incredible 2022 for you. Let's rewind back to April. Seems yes. a million miles ago now, so doesn't long. it? It's so November. <laughs> it is November. It's flown this year and with good reason because you've been a busy beat. But yes. let's go back to April when you were selected by the Seattle Storm in the WNBA draft. Where does that rate in terms of moments, highlights in your yeah. young career so far? Uh, it's definitely the highest for feeling most nervous on a day. Um, but no, that was probably pretty high, I think. Um, yeah, kind of realised that my name was kind of being thrown around. I didn't really believe it when my agent was telling me, but yeah, kind of a month out, I was like, oh, this is like a legit thing. Um, so yeah, obviously we like made a little day out of it. Um, my dad has a pub. I'll give him a shout out because he'll love it. The Crown to Elgin. Um, yeah. So we all went there um, and yeah, just celebrated the day. So we had it up on the big screen. I had my mum, dad, a couple of friends, a um, couple of people from like um, my local basketball association there. And um, yeah, I got to kind of the last picks. I was like, oh, will I go? Will I not? And then, yeah, my name popped up on the board and it was a really cool feeling. I think, you know, um, playing at the highest level has always been a massive goal of mine and I'm um, getting drafted to the WNBA. So, you know, I know it's only the first step in the journey, but um, yeah, it was a really cool day and to be surrounded with um, great family and friends was made it extra special. So you see your name before it's called out because of the delay. I remember yeah. being with, um, I was very lucky to be with Ezzy on her draft so day cool. with her agent yeah. and her parents. Yep. So it was just the four of us um, in Bruce Cater, her agent's office yep. in Essendon, like early on a Tuesday morning. Yep. And then I was at Shyla's um, yeah, draft cool. party. Yep. She had a like a sweet 16th. It was an event <laughs> in Sydney last the year. Donut wall. The donut wall. The donut wall. I was, was like, like oh. <laughs> <laughs> But it's really interesting because, yeah, because of the delay, yeah. Um, I remember Bruce and even Shane Hill last year, they sort of hear it, like if they're watching through the app, hear it before it comes up sort yep. of on ESPN. So was that like, did you see your name before you hear, they read it yeah. out? So mine was actually a bit different. So they kind of read kind of the first, say like 15, 16 picks. And then after that, it's like, they just kind of let it flow behind this. Oh, yeah. So you were a so I actually graphic? wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't read out. So oh. like, yeah, so like. That I think because like then it's not the five minute delay like they just come up at any time so like I think uh, there's a video of me I've just got like my head in my hands like elbows on the table I'm like <gasps> like feeling sick um and then yeah like I because I th- I sort of knew that if I was going to get picked up it was by Seattle mm. so I saw that they had the thirty third pick and I was like all right if I'm going to go it's going to be to this team and then I just see like a four letter name it started with J and then like I hear like a scream behind me and I'm like oh it's me like <laughs> Um, it was Shaz probably Melbourne. probably Shaz. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone and then someone <laughs> obviously had really good eyesight. Um, but yeah, then we all kind of yelled and screamed and then popped a bottle of champagne and yeah, it was a good day. <laughs> uh, it was a good day too because you got a few DMs, a few follows on Instagram <laughs> from some absolute goats of women's basketball right? and um, soon to be teammates. Mm. Tell me about who popped up on your Insta. Yeah, I think. Uh, the coolest three for me were probably uh, Telves. Telves messaged me probably within half an hour and she was like, congrats, like looking forward to it. Um, and I think Telves was actually taking it pick 33. So she was like, it's a good omen. Oh. So I was like, when Telves told me that, I was like, okay, like this isn't so bad. Um, and then Ezzy messaged me as well and so did LJ. So just seeing that like Aussie Seattle connection um, was really cool to me. Um that, yeah, that was really cool. And they were ones that like, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like I feel part of it already. And then um, two of the big dogs, Sue Bird and Brianna Stewart also messaged me. Um, and that was really cool too. Just to, yeah, their names in my DMs. I was like, oh, this what is so cool. It was just like, it was just like, congrats, um, welcome kind of thing. Um, and they put it on their stories as well. Oh and I was like, gosh. oh, this Did is you awesome. check your story views after you'd been shared by like Sue Bird? Oh, uh, uh, no. <gasps> You should have I checked didn't. how many views you had because nah. you would have got all her <laughs> audience. And did Stewie follow you? Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Oh, my yeah. <laughs> this is so great. Um, what does it mean to go to Seattle, which is basically the Australian WNBA team? You mentioned some yeah. of the the players that we've got there now in Talbs and, and also Ezzy, LJ, an absolute legend of the storm. You know, they retired her number 15 and yeah. we've had – you know, so many players in between, Jenna, Abby, yeah. the list goes on and on and on. Um, does it sort of feel like, you know, a familiar home you might be going to in the WNBA? Yeah, I think one, like they wear um, they wear green and gold. So I think that's one of the coolest things, you know. It feels like you're playing, not for Australia, but 
that connection's like already there. And yeah, like you said, like they've kind of paved the way and, you know, they've obviously put in a good word or made a great name for Australia basketball and stuff like going over there. So yeah, to following kind of their footsteps, um, yeah, it makes it, I feel like a bit more special. So when Seattle did pick me up, I'm like, oh, like Aussies are there and it'll be quite kind of cool too. Like hopefully when I go over to training camp, which I'm planning to in April, um, you know, hopefully Talbs and Ezzy are still there and, um, yeah, even Sammy was there a couple of years yeah. ago. So yeah, I think, and they're such a successful franchise too. So I think it makes that li- makes it all that little bit more special. Sammy, two time WNBA champion champ, yeah. with Seattle. Um, you mentioned heading to training camp next year. So you've taken um, the path, I guess, where you have opted not to go to college and play in the WNBL, which yep. means you're now into season three. Mm-hmm. So you're 20 years old. Yes, 20 years old, and you'll have three WNBL seasons under your belt. Surely that's something that Seattle looked at. But you'd be so content, I'm sure, with the journey you've chosen to take. You know, by the time you get to the WNBA, you've had yeah some big experiences at senior basketball. For sure. And, um, you know, I could have gone this year, but I think um, – I just think, like, personally, I wasn't ready to go over there and I would have gone in – to the training camp, not at a hundred percent. I think I'd just come off COVID um, at the end of the WNBL season um, and just playing against imports. You know, I went to get to Brit Sykes every day at practice and just the level that they're at. And like, sometimes she's coming off the bench. It's like, like, I don't think like my, uh, my body's like ready for that league yet. So being so young, Seattle didn't want me to come over immediately anyway. So I thought it was just kind of how everything fell into place for me was like a blessing in disguise. And um, yeah, I was able to go to Ballarat. Um, I had a really good off season there. So that's really what I wanted, just a season to work on kind of me. Um, being at the COE, you never really have an off season. So just that opportunity to like, you know, get stronger, work on my jump shot, just all these little things, fine tune my game. Um, hopefully I can come off a really good WNBL season. I'll be back on track next week. Um, and then, yeah, go over there fully confident that I can secure a roster spot. So you had a goal in 2022, which you've told me a bit about, and that was involving a training camp and a trip to a particular uh, yeah. place <laughs> overseas, and you achieved that this year. Tell yeah. us about the goal that you did set out to achieve and you did so. Yeah, so for me, um, yeah, I, I decided that um, I wanted to go to the New York camp um, with the Opals. I saw that kind of in the calendar and I was like that'd be cool like if I can make it to there like that'd be awesome and don't get me wrong once I got over to New York like obviously I wanted to make the World Cup team um but yeah just to just to get there I think I have to look back and realize like I wasn't even in the Opal squad 12 months ago so to be like almost part of that World Cup team um yeah I kind of have to pat myself on the back that it's been a good year um and yeah, being part of the team um, up until like five days before the World Cup, getting that opportunity to train, like I still I still fangirl all those girls. I'm not going to lie, like the respect I have for those girls and the Opals and what they did, like, um, yeah, they're an unbelievable group. So I just try and go into those camps. Um, I just listen, soak everything up like a sponge. Yeah, I'm myself and, you know, throw some jokes around here and there. But um, yeah, I just really appreciate the opportunity and um, yeah, it kind of makes me hungrier now to make the next kind of major event. You were so much a part of it, as you said, with the team yeah. up until five days before. So um, you were one of, I think, three cuts. Was it three cuts? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, to the final team. You, as you always do, put the team first and continue to train with them and be a part of the group. Um I know New York was your goal and you achieved that. Obviously, there would have been some disappointment not making the 12, but it it was just such an Opals thing to do, yeah. to be part of the team and their preparations up until five days before. Um, was that ever a doubt in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I, like I was so excited. Like I got a message from, I think it was like Sandy and Trish, and they were like, would you be happy to come Gold Coast? I was like, oh, mum, they want me to come to the Gold Coast. Like I was super excited. And like for me, like it wasn't even like a, a second thought, like, um, yeah, what, however I can contribute to that, you know, and I think that's a credit to the the sisterhood and the culture they made over the last 12 months. Um, yeah, as soon as I got that opportunity, like it was a no brainer. Um, yeah, just being around those girls, like I said, like it's just another opportunity for me to learn. Um, I got the opportunity to play in like three practice games with them and mm. yeah, just, yeah, just being on court with them, um, getting to know them more, like it's just awesome for me. And um, yeah, I really appreciated them reaching out and asking me to uh, train. I'm sure they would have appreciated my time, but um, yeah, it was really cool. And you were so much a part of it that when Australia won its first game of the World Cup <laughs> campaign against Mali on, on the Friday night, you were sitting courtside in Sydney yeah. and they got you on court yeah. and got around you. And it was so beautiful to see because you were so much a part of that team. How excited were you that they got that first win? And, and what was it like to be embraced on court? 
Yeah, I was stoked. You know, I was obviously, I was cheering on every possession. I was there the night before and felt the disappointment they would have felt when they lost against France. Um, but yeah, like it was so cool. Like Madge came over to me and put her hand out and I was like, oh, oh like you give me a handshake. Like I thought I was going to go give her a hug or something. And then she like dragged me and I was like, oh, here I go. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, yeah, the recognition, I guess, for them to come over and get around me. Um, I was stoked that I could be in that huddle and get around them and tell them that they were killing it. So, um, yeah, they're just an awesome group to be around and, you know, a bronze medal. Um, it's, just, it's just crazy. And the rebuild they've had this year and the work they've put into their culture, they're just uh, such a great group of girls. And uh, yeah, they, it was it was really cool. I, I loved it. I was like, oh, this is so cool. You are a ripper, Jade Melbourne, <laughs> because you sum up the selflessness and the team first ethos of what the Opals have been forever because, and I'm not sure if, you know, everyone knows this, but you were in pre-season for Canberra and you were regularly driving from Canberra to Sydney to watch the Opals and then driving back late at night because we were playing at 8.30. And I just, I couldn't believe it when I found out that that's what you were doing. And you, you know, you were, um, yeah, in a tough pre-season, you were probably missing out on a bit of sleep. But to me, that just summed up who you are, that you were coming to support your teammates and then, you know, driving back to Canberra at all hours to, you know, train the next morning. So um, I think that just completely sums up who you are and why you will be an Opal for many years to come. So good Thank job, you. Jade Melbourne. Thank you, Megan Hasway. <laughs> but no, I guess at the end of the day, I'm a country girl. So three hours down the road wasn't too far. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was a huge commitment by you. Yeah. Um, so, so well done. Um, let's talk next about your comeback because we have a fever um, break. <laughs> a mini, it's a mini comeback. I'm back, <laughs> I'm back like I never left. Um, it is a mini break. So we've got a fever window, which um, means there'll be no games this weekend. And then round four uh, on Wednesday, November 30, and it's uh, Adelaide Lightning hosting UC Caps. And you'll be back. I'll be back. It's going to be a great game and you must be so pumped to get back on court. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, And I think for me too, like just who I am, like I want to be on the court with the girls. Like, you know, we had a defensive session this week and like we stripped it back to the basics and I'm like, damn, like I'm missing out on doing that like with my team. And it's a real problem solving phase for us at the moment. So, yeah, just to be back this week um, on Thursday is our first team practice and you know, I haven't got the all clear from the physio yet, but I'm pretty sure it's that coming. I'll be I'll be in practice on <laughs> Thursday. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to that, being back with the group. Um, yeah, just being able to help them. And, you know, we're still in our hunt for our first win. So I like I want to do it um for Vili. I want to do it for the girls. So um yeah, we're gonna be hunting down Adelaide. We've got what, nine nine days down to recover and we'll be ready. So you've been a spectator the last couple of games. Are you really fidgety? So fidgety. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm stoked that I got to come here to, uh, to Melbourne um, and be a part of it yesterday. But, um, yeah, watching in Perth, I was like, oh, like you just want to be there. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I felt like a fan just watching like a Saturday night basketball game. I was yeah. like, oh, that's my team. Yeah, that's um, my team. But, yeah, I'm just like stoked, you know. I've just been, yeah, that's I think for me, like because I have to do something, I've been on top of the rehab and, um, yeah, it's just time to get back out on court now. Yeah, you'll be ready to go. Um, Gemma Potter, how's G going? She's had her surgery and she's on the road to recovery. Yeah, she's good. Um, and Gem's in really high spirits too, you know. Um, yeah, the reality that you're going to miss 12 months kind of kicked in for her. But, um, you know, she's one of the strongest people I know. Um, she's going to kill this rehab. She'll be – she's – progressing to already start taking a couple of steps and she's not even two weeks post-op. So, um, yeah, she's strong. Um, yeah, she's one of my best mates and, uh, yeah, I know she'll kill it. I know she'll be back on court and better than ever, you know, she just says second time, second time's a charm. So she's in really good spirits. And um, She was there yesterday, wasn't she? She was there yesterday. I love that. Yeah. And even like walking around like the, the bench and giving everyone high fives. I'm like, Jem, just relax, like yeah. get your crutches. And she's like, I'm fine. So, Yay. you know, that stubborn attitude. Um, yeah. So I know she'll, she's going to work well. Um, she's so happy she got to get into surgery straight mm. away, but, um, yeah, no doubt. She'll be back on court in no time. And that was the thing that she was most flat about. I spoke to her for ASPN oh, a couple of days after she did her ACL and she was most flat when you guys went off to Townsville yeah. and that she'd have to come back to Melbourne and not be with yeah. you guys. So, so nice that, you know, she was able to be with you here in Melbourne Absolutely. at the weekend. Now, round four will also be the 
Signet WNBL's first ever fighting period poverty round. The WNBL has partnered with national charity Share the Dignity and will set out to raise awareness and support for Australian menstruators who desperately need access to period products. So really important round, a very um, crucial cause that will shine more of a light on next week um, in the show. But we uh, we caught up at the season launch and did a bit of pre-filming, <laughs> didn't we? And we yeah. spoke about that charity then. So it's going to be great to learn yeah. a bit more about it yeah. um, heading into round four as, as we shine a light yeah. um, on that. But Jade, it's been great having you here. Thank you so much for making the time. It has been an absolute joy. No, it's been a dream, you know, co-host the show with the Megan Husway. Um, <laughs> no, nah, I've enjoyed every minute of it. And yeah, thanks. Thanks for putting me on your wish list. And it's been oh, great to you, be here. You're always oh. top of my wish list. <laughs> <laughs> and we might have to see whether we can get you on Zoom one week, oh. whether you can be on a screen in here. Be happy Will to do it. Will you come back? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, this time's flying by. I, I thought we were just starting. So, no, nah, it's been great. Um, yeah. And if you want to have me again, I'd, I'd love, to, every love week, to be here. Every week, Jade <laughs> Melbourne. Thank you. <laughs> 